Einstein's theory of relativity dictates that gravity can slow down time. Now, for the first time in history, a team of physicists at Cornell University have found a way to stop time entirely. I knew they were going to do this to me. Or at least appear to stop time by shaping light, by creating an instant of invisibility. In our first story on the countdown, think of it as scientists erasing a split second of history, rending an event undetected for a fraction of a fraction of a second, in this case, 40 trillionths of a second. Want to see it again? In other words, it's an invisibility cloak. It's not a long-lasting invisibility cloak, but it's a start. Hardly enough time to wander the halls of Hogwarts, and it does seem straight out of science fiction, but the phenomenon known as temporal cloaking alters how fast light flows, changing the dimension of time, thereby rendering objects and events invisible. We see events happening as light from them reaches our eyes. Cornell scientists utilized beams of light that move too fast for the human eye to even register, much like my college experience there. In this experiment, as one beam of light moves through a time lens that's thinner than a human hair, scientists shoot out two more beams of light that are shown in red, which travel at different speeds, interrupt the beam, creating an invisible gap in time that our eyes cannot detect, but we can make fake animation for. Alexander Gaeta, the director of Cornell School of Applied and Engineering Physics Department, said of the study, you kind of create a hole in time when an event takes place. You just don't know that anything ever happened. The study was partly funded by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA. Wasn't there a com sitcom? DARPA and Greg? DARPA, a unit of the Pentagon that develops futuristic technology for military purposes. But researchers say a more practical use could include more efficiently streaming data to processors. After all, according to scientists at my alma mater, it would take something that was 18,600 miles long to render that single second invisible. And that's a hell of a long cloak. I'll have that in an extra, 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 extra large. At this point, let's turn to comedian and the always astonishing countdown contributor, Maysoon Zaid. It's good to see you. Good to see Happy you, too. Happy New Year. The, this uh, co-author of the study, The Mad Scientist at Cornell, the latest in a series of them. Uh, he says that, that there may be good uses of this technology, but for some reason, people are more interested in the more illicit applications. You have a, any hunch on what kind of illicit applications he's referring to? I do. I have a hunch on what he's referring to with these illicit applications, but I'm afraid to even guess what people would do or, or vocalize that in any way because the only thing I can think of is something illegal. Yeah. And if I talked about it, I could get indefinitely detained under NDAA. <laughs> and unless I was in, you know, access of the cloak to throw it over myself and get out there in one trillionth of a second, well, it's going down quick. Now, now you're cutting yourself a more, more time than you need. It's 40 trillionths of a second. Oh. Oh my gosh, I don't think I can even get around me in that time. Right. What, uh, if you had one, what would you do with it? If it, say, if it worked, if it actually worked for, say, 40 minutes at a time rather than right. 40 trillion no, in a second. Say, 40, 40 minutes gives me a lot of stuff to do, but I was thinking about the 40 trillionth of a second. Yes. If I had that 40 trillionth of a second, the only thing I can think of, random act of violence, right? <laughs> So I'm saying I'm going to take that 40 trillionth of a second. I'm going to smack Chris Brown across the head. Okay. That's what I'm going to do with it. Or right. why? why? Anything about him just on behalf of women? Or? Because, well, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm doing it on behalf of humanity. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it on behalf of women. But also because I would get such a distinct pleasure of the fact that I could do it yeah. without a cloak. But it's so much more fun when you're <laughs> invisible. <laughs> All right, you, uh, we'll, we'll switch this up. Okay. Apply it to politics. Yes. You have that cloak. Uh, what would you? Which GOP candidate would you throw it over, and why? Okay, this was a difficult choice for me because my first instinct immediately knew. Yeah. Because the doughboy complexion freaks me out. But <laughs> I've decided to, you know, do a service to society. We're throwing the invisibility cloak over Santorum. Right. It's disgusting. It makes me vomit. I can't watch TV with my mother anymore. Put the cloak on Santorum. Yeah. Uh, I think he's in the process of slowly pulling up the cloak over himself <laughs> for a lot longer than 40 please, trillionths of a second. Because you know he said, he said, blah people, not black people. He said, blah people. He said, blah people. Oh, you know? I see. Yeah, he, wasn't, he stopped himself. They're a whole different breed. Apparently. Or at least, um, he's, it, it, he, there are enough of them, whoever they are, there are enough of him for him to make somebody scared of them. Exactly. That's it. Uh, and then Michelle Bachman has, has, has gone. We can't even do the invisibility thing with her because she's stepped away. And I say, we pour one out for Michelle Bachman tonight. And by that, I mean a bottle of pills. <laughs> But she's the she was the only one of them that turned out to be rational. When she yes. lost, she got she got her fanny kicked in the in the Iowa caucus and she went, I hear you. 
I'm leaving. Peace out. It was an amazing moment of clarity that Rick Perry completely lacked. I felt like he was the girl on The Bachelor who didn't get the rose but refused to get in the limousine. Right. I was like, Rick, but, it's time to go home. Yeah, but she but she pulled she pulled the cloak up over herself. She did. She it. did. She's gone. What? But I mean, the, the, so in other words, unless Palin re-enters, the first two people who were smart enough to actually see that people didn't like them were Palin and Bachman. Oh and if you God. had said that a year ago and made that bet you would own enough to buy, full circle, an invisibility cloak from Cornell University. Cloak. Yes, and Pat Robertson knew that because God told him, but he didn't ooh, tell me, and now ooh. I have no cloak. I can't tell you who it is because I'm seeing it. Countdown contributor Maysoon Zaid, it's always a pleasure to have you here, and uh, we'll see you again soon, I hope. Thank you so much. That's Countdown for this, the 362nd day since John Boehner and the Republicans took the House. That's 362 days in which the Republicans have failed to pass a jobs bill of any kind. Congratulations on getting through another day of this crap. This they sold me as an invisibility cloak and it didn't work. I'm Keith Holderman, good night and good luck.